to another episode of Top of the Morning. I'm John Carrington. I just want to welcome you to a special edition where we're going to spotlight a program entitled Small Businesses, Recognizing Small Businesses That are owned by big thinkers and it's sponsored by the j for p associates you're going to learn a lot about how to be in business and how to recognize big thinkers in the business arena so don't go anywhere keep it locked right here now we're going to speak with mr peter v handel who is the ceo for j for p associates uh peter handel it's a pleasure to have you here in this economic situation we're in right now man i'm, I'm glad to have a, a genius sitting next to me <laughs> in regards to being in business why don't you tell us what's going on with j for p associates thank you john but what, the big issue on our plate right now is a very substantial renovation of a significant portion of the the facility we have a lot of offices of the dss department of social services here on the complex and we just redid the lease that we have with the state of Maryland. And so now we're spending a very significant amount of money to refurbish the whole facility, make it much more state of the art, and to redo all sorts of parts of it. So that's, that's keeping us very busy. You are located near one of the uh, pillars of this North Avenue Broadway area, the National Great Blacks and Wax Museum. Small business owned by Big Thinker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how uh, uh, you at JP, J4P Associates impact that particular kind of business. D Dr. Martin and her, and her late husband are, were absolutely big, big thinkers. There's no question about that. Um, they have about 250,000 visitors a year, as it is now. And uh, they're planning a very substantial expansion. We, we have about a million four hundred thousand visitors a year during the year. It's actually one of the, the, the highest traffic areas in all of Baltimore. But once they, uh, they have done that kind of expansion that they're thinking about, it will have a significant impact on all of East Baltimore because it will bring a lot more people into it. It'll, it'll do the kinds of things that we've done in the immediate area, and it'll do it twice as much. And I think that's going to be really very helpful for the, the whole community. The theme of our gathering today is recognizing small businesses who are owned by big thinkers. <laughs> People cylinder with big thinkers. <laughs> but my question to you is, um, what else should small businesses do besides just think wild and crazy? Well, I don't think they should think wild and crazy. I think they should be ambitious. They should be creative. Entrepreneurs are the, the essence of the American economy. It is the, the smaller businesses, not the, the cylindras of the world, that really make the economy work. And it has for, for centuries. And it, the people that we're honoring today are really good examples of that kind of thinking. And they, they put one foot in front of the other, they do what they do really well, and they serve a market that really wants the products and services that they provide. And that's the way the economy gets out of the kind of mess that we're in. We need more people like that. You mentioned more people need to. Who is going to be the lone rangers to save this economy? The economists, the people who crunch the numbers, the people who actually make product and provide services, or the people who are in politics who know how to shift and deal and smoke build rooms? Who's going to save this economy? <laughs> That's a very good question, John. I mean, my personal views are that the, the, the economists just analyze the numbers and they crunch them. That's, they don't really make the economy work. I, I think that the, the politicians need to set the environment and give whatever assistance they can to help the small business people in the United States do what they do best. So I think it's your second choice. I think it's the people that actually provide the services, that really manufacture whatever the products are. They do a good job at it. People like that. And that's how they grow. That's how they employ people. And I think that's the way the economy will gradually build back. Okay. And, and as I watch it, the, the news reports and read the newspaper, I'm really curious about one, one simple question. Who creates jobs? Washington? Maryland state government? The guy on the street who needs a pack of gum? Who <laughs> creates jobs? In, in, the, in the final analysis, it's the consumers and the users of the products and services. So if it's the, the state or the feds building a road or highway, well, that's providing a service, if it's, as long as it's not a bridge mm -hmm. to nowhere, it's providing a service that the people are wanting and demand. So mm -hmm. it's the people that are really creating those mm -hmm. kinds of jobs. Uh, some of the people that we're, we're honoring today, you know, home care, for example, 
uh, somebody that um, is providing electric, electrical services in, in our building here, for example, is one of, the, one of the people that we use. They're providing a service that we, we need and we, that we use. So who provides it? Well, we do as the, the consumer, the user, the, the person, the organization that's demanding the services. Mm -hmm. They're providing it by providing the services. They're providing the jobs by providing the services. So it's a kind of a partnership. All right. Okay. I, I like you, man. You ought to be, you ought to be in Washington, D.C. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> that's not my <laughs> thing. <laughs> what advice do you have for somebody who's watching who wants to be in business? They want to be a maker. They want to create a service or provide a product that people really, really need. What advice do you have for them? Well, you know, Mahatma Gandhi in, in India years ago, he said the customer is God. And the, the best advice that I think any business person can, can have is to listen to the customer. What is it that the customer wants? I mean, that's what we try to do here at J4P Associates. Our, we look at the stakeholders that we have. And sure, the state is a major stakeholder for us because they rent a lot of the space here in the facility. The community around us is a major stakeholder here because they, they are our neighbors. They're people that we interact with on a regular basis. So what do we at J4P try to do? We try to listen to what it is that they want, and we try to provide it to them. That's what makes the American economy so vibrant and so healthy. All right. Well, are there, do you have any final thoughts for us as we wrap up here? Well, this is our seventh uh, annual Black History Month uh, celebration, and it's something that we at J4P have been really excited about. We, we've honored, uh, last year it was women in leadership. This year, as we've just been discussing, it's the entrepreneurs and people that have started their own businesses and have been very successful. We've honored uh, Chief Judge Bell, for example, and a lot of other celebrities in the, in the community. We had a gangster rap debate with some of the local high school kids, uh, and it was really an absolutely fascinating thing to, to listen to. And, and it's, it's been something that we, we do because we think it's, it's, it's fun, it's interesting, and we, we provide, I think, a, a venue for people to be honored and recognized that deserve that kind of recognition. So we're, we're absolutely delighted to be celebrating it. Do you have any final thoughts for us? Well, it's been one of, one of the highlights for, for me in being part of the East Baltimore community is just that, being part of the community. The people here have really welcomed me and our whole team into the community as, as, as neighbors. And that's the way we like to be treated. That's the way we feel we treat our neighbors here. It's been an absolute delight. To the, we've been here for almost a quarter of a century now. Well, it's been a delight talking to you. And I, I appreciate all the advice that you've given us. And I want to thank you for being a part of uh, uh, this interview. And, and of course, I want you to keep recognizing small businesses mm -hmm. owned by big thinkers. Absolutely. Thank you, Peter B. Handel. Thank you very, very much, John. And we'll be right back. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. My name is Bernard Jennings, and I will be your MC today. I am. <laughs> I didn't know I had a fan club, but it's all good. You hear that, Peter? She said yes. I uh, work with Peter Handel and J4P Associates, the uh, company that's putting on this event. It's our seventh time. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. It's our seventh year at doing this, and I can't believe how quickly the time went by. You usually have to work when no one else cares to work or work with you. It's tough. So with that, we are going to begin recognizing our small business visionaries that are in the five sectors of the economy that I spoke of earlier. And I want to do this in alphabetical order. And what I'm about to, re to read or to communicate in terms of their profile doesn't do justice to what their company is all about. I want to ask Peter to come up and be part of the photo op. And I want to also say that each <coughs> recipient has been given a citation from both of our U.S. Senators, from both uh, Ben Cardin and Barbara Mikulski. That's how much they thought of what has been achieved by these individuals and their respective companies. Uh, so our first honoree, PB Healthcare. It's in alphabetical order. Ms. Jackie Bailey, registered nurse. Jackie started PB Health in 1989 with just four employees and one small office. 
businesses devoted to helping the underserved with in-home care. The agency has now grown from four employees to a staff of 130. In 2011, PB Healthcare had revenues <coughs> approaching $6 million. Last year, the company treated over 1,500 patients at home, and it's the only minority-owned care agency in the city, home care agency in the city of Baltimore and the metropolitan area. A remarkable accomplishment from a woman who started in Mississippi. <laughs> Tough times, hard times, Mississippi. And now, look at her standing at the threshold of success that no one ever dreamed. And I was told by your staff, uh, Jackie, that uh, you were inspired by a woman who was a nurse in Mississippi, and Jackie always wanted to be a nurse. And the woman said, no, you will not just be a nurse. You will be a registered nurse. So don't stop anywhere until you get that and then look at your life long term. It's not about you, it's about who's coming behind you. And there she is. Thank you so much. For all of you. And uh, Jackie, I want to give you your, oh, I think we need to hand these out. This is your <coughs> citation. And Peter, maybe, uh, this is your citation from Senator Ben Cardin. And in fact, if you have two hands, then you can hold both. One from Senator Ben Cardin <laughs> and the other one from uh, Senator Mikulski. That is, and this is from Senator Mikulski. Thank you so much. Uh, mind, Ray, if you don't mind, take another photo. Uh, this is your citation from Senator Ben Cardin. And in fact, if you have two hands, then you can hold both. One from Senator <laughs> Cardin and the other one from uh, Senator Mikulski. That is. Thank you. And this is from Senator Mikulski. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess you're on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabetical in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> Alphabetical in reverse. Here you go. Thank you. Ray, would you get another photograph of that, please? Our next, recipient, our next recipient is in the sector of accounting. And if there's anything on the radar screen from a national political standpoint, it is certainly budgets, finance, improprieties, and the accounting field. We all remember the Enrons of the world, and we all remember the budget struggles of last year and this year in Washington. Well, Isaacs and Simmons. Rudolph T. Isaacs, would you come forward, please? Because you're in the heat of battle, and you serve your clients very, very well, the corporate and the individual. <laughs> Rudolph began his career as a tax intern for a local accounting firm. And during his tenure, he had an interest in accounting. He advanced from staff accountant to supervising staff accountant. During that tenure, he switched gears and went to work for a well-known healthcare company as the director of accounting where he tested and developed his management skills. It was during this time period that he became a certified public accountant. Realizing his core competencies in accounting and his capacity to work well with all levels of people he decided to find his way as a visionary and started his own accounting practice. Today we have the accounting firm of Isaacs and Simmons. We all thank you so much. You gotta take another. That's for one hand. And this is for your second hand. 
I'll blame the people who delivered these to me. They didn't know which order they were going. <laughs> thank you. But we thank you all. Our next firm is Wayne Jackson from Kid Electric. <laughs> pleasure of meeting Wayne and his son at the going away party for Claire Justino and he was passionate about a couple of things with respect to his business. He was focused on quality of work as a small business. He's in the service sector and that's critical. He was focused on completing the jobs that he gets on time. He started in a humble way. He services large companies, he services small companies, and he looks forward to passing this company along to his son. He spoke affectionately of his son at that event, and I just met him for the first time, and he's looking to the next generation, not just the here and now. And that is the essence of a true visionary. He's passionate about it, he's passionate about his client, and by the way, uh, Peter is one of his clients, so, he, <laughs> so of course he's passionate about it. <laughs> but congratulations, Wayne, and uh, you are remarkable with the challenges that you've had. And his core principle is customer intimacy. He said to me, Bernard, it's not important in terms of how big the client is or how small the client is. They're my clients and I want to keep them, and I want to service them. So I focus on them like they're the most important thing to me during the day, and they are. Right. Okay, we gotta get, to we gotta get this right for another photo. And it's gotta be this one. Yep, thank you. The other sector that's being recognized today is none other than the environment. And my God, how many times do we hear that? Environmental protection. No, we don't need it. Yes, we need it. No, we, uh, they're too heavily regulated in nature. No, they're not. Well, here's a company that protects us, protects the city, protects the county, protects us from bad things happening to us when we don't protect the environment. And that is Mr. Lindsey Johnson III from L and J Waste Recycling. Please come, please come forward. He started his company with a single truck and only 12 containers. And today he has seven trucks, state-of-the-art trucks. Uh, that's a company that makes these trucks. What's the name of the company here that's Mac, Mac dealership. The Mac dealership. And he now has over 200 dumpsters around the state of Maryland and Baltimore City. That's a lot of business. That's a lot of recycling. Too. His company is LEED A compliant, MBE certified, has a hub zone certified, and they're conveniently located where it needs the work done and protecting our efforts and our interests. L&J helps to preserve the region's clean air and water with their experienced staff and hard work and the growth of their business is on the rise and they're employing a lot of people. Thank you very much for all that you've done. Bernard, I don't mean to be out of order, but he's very charitable also. He gives back to East Baltimore. He's donated lots and lots of dumpsters that we might have a cleaner in East Baltimore. So okay. well, thank you. This is from Senator Ben Cohen. Last but not least, this was done in alphabetical order, we have Mr. Christopher Warren 
from Starports Industries, retired. <laughs> Christopher is a product of Philadelphia, public schools, divorced parents, military parents, lived abroad, lived around, and encountered financial challenges when he was young, had to drop out of school, had to drop out of college because of that. But he's creative, he's energetic, and if you want something invented, just give Chris a problem and he'll fix it. He will find ways to do things that no one else thinks of. When you think of a leader and a visionary, it's Christopher Warren. He built a company from scratch. After several attempts in different fields, he went on to create a company called Starports. Christopher invented a product that is being now distributed around the world. Uh, it is a form of polyurethane. Did I get it right, Chris? Right. He started off and with a plant down by the Raven Stadium that was manufacturing ceramic floor tiles. He, as a visionary, saw problems in the flooring industry that very few people saw. And that was the messy way in which grout was applied. And if you ever put it down, you've experienced it. Chris invented and patented a toothpaste style grout right by the Raven Stadium, quietly, in, his, in the madness of his lab work at night with his coat on, <laughs> and he looked like the mad professor. <laughs> he uh, invented something that enabled him to create a big company, attract investors, and he eventually sold the company last year. And now he's trying to figure out what he wants to do next with his life. But we certainly hope that it's something that will involve and impact the African American community. And I know it will. Christopher, please come forward. Thank you. There's two. And uh, before we leave, uh, I want to ask the families and supporters, I want, to be, I want you to be recognized in a few minutes, but I also want you to have a photograph that's appropriate for you to, to treasure. We'll see that you get them. Thank you. Well, Christopher, thank you so much. <laughs> well, Peter, that's sort of a wrap on Black History Month 2012. Every year you ask, how are we going to top it? And I, I always give you the answer. Carl gives you the same answer. We don't know. <laughs> but somehow we do it, I guess. This is no exception. And thank you on behalf of the community. Thank you on behalf of the elected officials for your investments and the public-private partnership that you've had with uh, the state of Maryland for quite a while. And uh, I know you want to say a few words to, to wrap things up. Thanks, Bernard. And as, as Michael said, I think I'm the only thing now between us and lunch. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot. Uh, but, but you know, you, you said that, uh, and Michael made reference to it, as if I was the one that really started all this. In fact, as, as the lieutenant governor was talking recently about, it is a public-private partnership. And it actually began with Governor Schaefer. I mean, he was the one that first conceived of the notion of using state leases to help revitalize the neighborhoods. And that was the, the actual origin of the whole thing. So it was, as, as Michael said, a really cooperative arrangement with lots of partners and lots of people involved. And I, I listened to Michael carefully, and I listened to Bernard carefully. Did anybody here figure out who actually won on the golf course? I was there. They were a little vague about that, weren't they? <laughs> you won't say, I won't say. Now we know. Not sure what that means. Um, as Bernard said, you know, this is the seventh annual Black History Month celebration that we've had. And I was, I was thinking back of the ones that we we have had some of them have been really absolutely fascinating. We had uh, Judge Bell, Chief Judge Bell, speak at one of them. Uh, speaker Pro Tem, Adrian Jones, speak at, at one. Uh, we had a. Uh, it was talking of the interview that we had earlier about the debate from high school students in the, the area on gangster rap 
And that was fascinating. It really was. I mean, one, one side was saying it was free speech. The other side was saying it was a bad influence on our, our kids. I mean, things like that have been really fascinating. We had a, a health care event. Last year, we, we were uh, able to honor some very distinguished leading women in, in the community. And today, the entrepreneurship. And the entrepreneurship is really something that makes America work. It is the small businesses, not those big businesses that you hear about all the time. It's the small businesses that really are the backbone of our economy. And that's the reason why we'll get out of the kind of situation we're in. And I think the stories that we've just heard that Bernard was telling us about, about the, the, the honorees that we've had are really awe-inspiring. They're really impressive. I mean, I, 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 I've never invented anything in my life. The idea of starting a business the way some of these fellows and women have, and, and being able to do what they've done is really, I think, remarkably impressive. And I think we have to really give them a lot of credit. So congratulations again to all of them. <laughs> part of the, the, the J4P culture is to try to patronize people in the community, to do business with them. And yes, Kid Electric is one. Fortunately, we haven't had the need to, for, for home care yet, so that isn't one that we've had. But, but I mean, that is part of our, our J4P philosophy. And, and as some of you know, the philosophy really has different parts. I mean, one is it's, it's a win, win, win. I mean, and that's how we look at our doing business in, in Baltimore and in the community. It, it's a win for the state because we're a very good landlord. We are a property owner that I think does the right thing. It's certainly a good for J, good for J4P, and it's a win for J4P because the state is triple A credit, and there are only what Michael five states that are left that are triple A. I think something like six or seven. Six, six or seven states that are left that are triple A. I mean that is really very impressive. So from from our point of view, it's a win. From the point of view of the community, it's it's certainly a win. That uh, we look at what the change is in the period of time that Bernard was describing of what this neighborhood was like then and then compared to now. And it's been the influence of the, we literally have a million four hundred thousand visitors to the complex and there's about 1,500 people that work here. And that's been a really major economic boom to the area. I remember after the, the health care um, event that we had for Black History Month a couple of years ago, a man across the street came up to me after it was, was here, came up to me and he said, thank you, Mr. Handel. And I said, you're welcome. And I thought he was saying thank you for, for, for lunch, for the, you know, the event. And he said, no, 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 you, you don't understand. He said, I live across the street. And he said, when I wake up in the morning and I, I leave my, my apartment with my son, I'm proud to live in the neighborhood. He said, I really feel good that the complex is there and has made that kind of difference. And I, I have to tell you, it really gave me chills at the time. And, and the fourth win, really quite seriously, and Pat, my wife, and I talk about it a lot, is how people in the community here have welcomed us and made us feel a part of the community. I was saying to the major just before the event began that he and, and many of the others here make us feel like we belong, because we do belong. We are neighbors, and we really appreciate that. So I think it's much more important, though, to have lunch. So let me say thank you to everybody, and thank you for coming. We really appreciate your being here. Thank you. There is one final order of business, Peter, and Senator Barbara Mikulski, the longest uh, serving senator, female senator in U.S. history, has sent you a letter acknowledging what you just said. I don't know if you called her to tell her. To tell her. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to present that to you, sir, if you don't mind. Senator Mikulski.